So it's Tuesday again and I didn't really have anything to talk about but I did just get back from a festival because it's summertime and I'm doing that a lot. Um, <clears throat> so for this particular festival I decided to get a, a henna piece. I also did this because I am really anxious to get a tattoo uh, but I have to wait because I'm gonna do it with my boyfriend and he doesn't know what he wants to get yet so I have to be patient and wait. So if you saw my previous video on what to do when waiting to get a tattoo instead of going ahead and doing something stupid by getting it done <clears throat> by a crappy artist or someone who doesn't know how to tattoo or just you know rushing and making hasty decisions and not ending up with the piece you want one of those tips was get a henna tattoo. So I went ahead and did that. This was actually my first henna tattoo. Because I've never really had to wait because I used to be sort of immersed in the industry. So yeah. Uh, but this time I had to wait. So this is what I got. And I'm going to talk a little bit about it. So this is my first henna piece. I didn't really know what to expect. I got two different designs because I wanted the full piece to sort of make my hand look like Garnet from Steven Universe's glove. I'm sorry, the lighting is like not that good, but you can see it's kind of like her glove, it's triangular. So I got a more Moroccan design on the outside and then a more traditional flowery design on the inside. Sorry, Moroccan on the outside and then traditional on the inside or the palm of my hand. Now, for those of you who don't know anything about henna, this is a natural henna. I didn't do black because black is incredibly dangerous. I didn't know this at first, so I'm sharing this with you. Black is incredibly dangerous. It's made with chemicals, not the natural henna, eh, henna plant. Um, it can burn and cause permanent scars and marks in your skin. So if you are going to a henna artist and they're offering you black henna, turn and walk away in the other direction. The lady I went to is very professional, so I was really I was really happy about that. She really knew what she was talking about. She had several, several books about henna and uh, several henna design books, which I liked. She, yeah, she did this, like both pieces only took maybe about an hour and that's because we were also talking a lot. Cause she also comes to the coffee shop that I work at, so. You know, we have some stuff to talk about, about her theater, about my cop shot, all that. So, I don't know, that was fun. What else can I say about this? Uh, right, so this process was also really similar in some ways to getting a tattoo. Like, you, just, you, sit, you sit down, you guys talk about what you want, and she does the piece. Of course, there's a lot less annotation stuff involved <clears throat> because it's literally just painting on your hand. But because the paste needs to set in the and not move around on your hand, she has to wrap you up. Kind of like when you're done getting a tattoo, you get wrapped up, right? And then there is a lengthy aftercare procedure. So you need to let the pen, the henna paste sit on in place for four to eight hours uh, for it to be dark for it to last longer. Now, when I went to the festival, it rained a lot, which is why it's already falling out, because everything I was touching was wet. But if you're not washing your hands or your hands aren't constantly wet, it should last a little more than a week, I guess. So yeah, I had mine on for the full eight hours. Uh, I went to bed with it. I'll insert pictures of the process. on for the full eight hours and then when you take the bandages off you scrape it off with a I just use like a credit card you just scrape the paste off and it'll be a bit like like pulling hairs not painful but like uncomfortable 
And um, on my skin tone on the outside, it was like invisible. It was like I just scratched the entire design off and you couldn't see it at all. But instead of washing the like little extra bits off, instead of washing your hands with water, uh, I, used, I was told to use lemon juice. So I just squeezed half a lemon and rubbed it on my hands and it was like magic. The design sort of appeared. Not too bright, or not too dark, rather. Like, I could still barely see it, but I could see that it was there, which was refreshing. So I did that and then slowly, over a couple of days, the paste started to get darker and darker. And it was about this dark since I believe Saturday morning and I got it done Thursday watching this on Tuesday and I got it done the last Thursday that happened so and this is it now this is how dark it'll be until it fades to this so yeah I did wash my hands a lot so this is why it is already fading but yeah I like the Moroccan design because it's a lot thicker and sort of more bold in pattern it's got a lot more like plant looking like uh, designs. I like the dots as well going up along this. Yeah, and I just wanted it to look like Garnet's Glove from Steven Universe because I've been watching that show lately. Actually, I just, I just got caught up, so. Yeah, uh, it's another cartoon that I feel adults, young adults should watch. But yes, that's all I had to talk about today. I'll come up with a better topic next week. Uh, if you have any comments, leave them down below, and if you have any questions, because I don't feel like I covered all of this, leave them down below. If you've got henna before, let me know your experience. Let me know if you got a traditional or a more Moroccan piece. Let me know if you did more on your fingers. Send me some pictures on my Facebook page or submit some pictures to my Tumblr because I do post submissions. I don't know if anyone knows that, but I do. So yeah, let's talk about henna. And until then, I'll see you next week.